Give me anything you want to say? Yeah, it was cute. Cute grump. Okay. Hello and welcome, or welcome back if you are a returning viewer. My name is Addie, and today we are going to be painting this little tiger. We are going to be using the Procreate Print Works Pack, which is a brush pack from Uproot Brushes and Design Cuts. It is a massive brush pack, so we're going to be covering just the screen print section as well as the paper textures. If you want to follow along exactly, you can find those brushes in the description below. I have that linked. As always, you can adapt this tutorial to follow along using any brushes that you already have. I'm gonna be walking through the basic steps of how to achieve that print effect and aesthetic, as well as some ways that you can enhance this project and really make it your own. You can also use this tutorial as the basis to draw other animal heads, but this is because it's 2022 and it's the year of the tiger. All right, enough chatter, let's get into it. Now to start, I am working in an eight and a half by 11 or standard letter size piece of paper if you are in the US. And this is set to 300 DPI. In my layers panel, I have pre-set up and renamed my layers. And before we get into anything else, I am going to put down a paper texture. Using the paper textures that come with this kit, they are all brushes, and the way this works is there is an overlay type that goes above the rest of the layers, and then a non-overlay texture that goes below everything. I really like how realistic this setup is and the depth of texture. So to use this, we are going to select from my December palette, I'm selecting this white, which is actually a bit of an off-white color, and you will see that when we lay down the base texture. Now I'm starting on my uppermost layer, and you can see I've renamed this overlay, and then using the Repro Paper Overlay Brush, I have the size and opacity set to 100%, and I'm gonna center and zoom out my canvas, make sure that it is aligned and level. And then with one swoop, I'm filling the entire canvas with the paper texture. Then I'm going to tap the N here to access the blend modes, and I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. Now you can't see anything. However, when we paint, you'll see that texture come through on anything painted beneath it. Now for our base texture, I'm going to do the same thing, but with the non-overlay version of this brush. And once again, I'm using one brush stroke to fill the entire canvas with texture. And then back in the layers panel, I am keeping this layer set to the normal blend mode. Now we are going to be drawing this primarily using the symmetry tool. So to set that up on my canvas here, I am going into the wrench up here in the upper left, and then I'm gonna tap canvas and then drawing guide. From here, I'm going to tap edit drawing guide and I'm selecting symmetry here. And then make sure that it is set to vertical symmetry and that rotational symmetry is off. From here, you can tap done and then it turns just this bottom layer into an assisted drawing layer. I'm going to duplicate this because I am going to draw my outlines on a separate layer. And then on this second symmetry layer, we can get started. To draw all of my base shapes, which are going to be on these two symmetry layers, I'm going to use this crunchy ink liner, and then I'm selecting this dark gray color. To start, I am just drawing an ellipse and keeping my pencil to the screen until it snaps into a quick shape. From here, I can release and on this notification up at the top, I'm going to tap edit shape and I can shift this. So what I'm trying to do is align the circle on the symmetry line so that there's just one solid single shape with consistent stroke weight. And then I'm also stretching the shape to be less of an oval and more of a circle by pulling these nodes. From here, I'm going to draw a smaller circle shape, and this is going to become the snout. Same thing, I'm tapping edit shape after it's snapped into an ellipse and moving it to a line. And I'm shifting it so that it overlaps like a lopsided Venn diagram almost, um, so that these nodes here of the ellipse line up here with the larger outline. And then I'm gonna tap to release that. 
Now I can go in with the eraser on the same brush tool and erase this overlapping line. And then we're going to draw this little triangle shape here and fill that in. And then to draw the mouth, I am drawing an arc going from the tip of the triangle over to the side area. Okay, now we can draw the snout, which we're just going to create an angled line up from the corners of the nose and close that shape at the top. For the placement of the ears, eyeball a vertical line coming up from the mouth. Then I draw an arc and I hold until it snaps into a quick shape. And then a second arc coming down to reattach to the head. From here, off of the inner arc that we drew, the first one, I draw a straight line connecting to the head, sort of like a, a tangent. And then we'll color that gap in. Okay, from here, we can adjust the face shape. So we're going to add some furry fluffs on the side of his face. And to do that, I am drawing a series of arced lines. And it's gonna look a little weird until you go in and erase this line. And now that I've expanded the width of the face, I want to lower that cheek jawline a little bit. So I'm just drawing a new arc and erasing the old one. All right, I'm gonna add a lower little lip here just with a single arc. And then I'm separating his lower jaw just a little bit and then erasing a little bit of the curve there. We can add in some little eyes and some stripes. So I like to start my stripes coming from the side of his head tapering off towards the center. And I like to start them above the scruff here. We'll do three of these. And then along the symmetry line, I am drawing these horizontal stripes above the snout area. We'll add some little whisker marks in the snout. All right, before we get to the coloring portion of this, I'm going to turn off drawing assist and now things will not be symmetrical here. Then with the eraser set to the same brush, I'm going to go in and in the upper side, add a little bit of reflection. And so I didn't want that part to be symmetrical. If there's anything that you want to do here to clean it up and change it from being symmetrical, you certainly can. I'm going to keep things pretty symmetrical here, but I want to make the tiger a little more graphic or like a more vector style. So using the eraser, I'm going to add some small breaks in the lines in certain places. And I'm actually going to turn back on my symmetry for this because I don't want this to be asymmetrical. Also, here are a couple other ideas for drawing the eyes if you wanna try something different than what I did in this video. Okay, so next we're going to be coloring this in. So moving down to my second symmetry layer, still using the crunchy ink liner, I'm going to select this orangish color. And with this, I am creating an outline of everything that I want to be orange. And then I'm closing that shape because I'm going to color drop to fill here. And with color drop, you drag and drop the color and hold your pencil to the screen to adjust the threshold of color. And so if you increase it all the way at 100, it fills up the entire screen. So we're going to decrease it so that it doesn't do that. Now there's a couple things that I want to fill with this white. So I want to create a closed shape. I'm gonna decrease the opacity here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm connecting this with the orange just on the bottom here. And then I can color drop to fill that. 
I'm gonna draw a couple white dots here to fill in the eyes. And then I'm creating a closed shape in the ears and color dropping to fill those as well. One last thing I almost forgot to do. We want his little whiskers to be white. So I'm creating an arched line from the snout up here. And then I'm gonna color drop to fill. Now, if your color drop threshold is still really high, it'll fill the entire shape with white, which is not what we want. So keep your pencil to the screen and reduce the threshold. It remembers the last threshold that you used. So if you run out of space to scroll, you can always just undo and it'll keep it there. So you can do it in multiple steps, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've filled the whiskers. And then with this pink color, I'm just gonna draw right on top and I'm adding a little pink to the mouth. Zoom in. We're gonna add cute little lines to indicate rosy cheeks. Now, next, we will want to remove any overlap of the fill colors and the outline so that they fit together perfectly. Because the fill colors are all on one layer, it's easy to do this by selecting the layer contents of the line work layer you can do this either by tapping to bring up the side menu or you can use the shortcut of pressing and holding two fingers on the layer until the selection mask appears. Making sure that I am working on the fill color layer and not the line work layer, I can use three fingers to scrub back and forth on the screen to remove everything in the selection. This fully removes the overlap. Here is an insert of what the fill color layer now looks like without the white paper background. So now, to get the screen print effects, I'm going to tap on this layer and turn on reference. So what this means is that when you use threshold-based tools such as color drop, auto select, or recolor, if you use those tools on any other layer, it will treat the layer that you've marked as reference as the guide. So it's probably easiest if I just show you what this looks like. If I move to an empty layer and then tap the selection tool, I'm gonna to make sure that it's set to automatic. And then to select only the orange, I just tap where that is. And then I have to kind of play around with the threshold a bit so that it doesn't pick up the pink. Now I've turned the opacity of the original layer down. So the contrast of the colors is kind of hard to see on the screen visually, but it will auto select each color or section based on the threshold bar up here and what you have it set to. So when the threshold is set all the way in the 90s, the selection picks up all three of the colors of the reference layer. And you can tell because when they're selected, they're kind of like inverted versions of the colors. So I'm going to select just the orange here. And once that selection is live, I can paint the screen tone. So I'm already on the empty layer for this. And from here, I can pick my screen tone brush to lay down the print texture. I'm gonna use the screen tone dirty brush. Then I'm gonna make sure that the canvas is level. If you aren't sure if it is, you can pinch to tilt slightly and then release, and you'll kind of see the canvas bounce into place here. This is important because if you're laying multiple brush strokes or using different combinations of the various screen tone textures, working on a level canvas means that all of those textures will be aligned. And this is especially useful because these brushes are pressure sensitive. So I'm gonna be laying down more brush strokes in some areas to build up the color. And it ends up looking really natural because it just looks like more ink was pressed through the screen in some areas than in others. So it's very realistic. All right, next I can deselect and then moving up to my empty layer, I am once again going to use the selection tool. And once I kind of figure out where the threshold needs to be to select just the pink, I can just tap each of the lines to select them. Then with the selection live, I'm gonna grab the pink color and switch to the brush tool and I can paint in the texture here. Now I'm layering in quite a bit of color here because this is such a small portion of the piece and I really want the pink to pop through. Then I can deselect and moving up to my third empty layer, I'm gonna tap back on the selection tool and once more, I'm gonna to tap to auto select each area where the white is
And then I'm gonna to switch to the brush tool and picking the same white color as before, I'm gonna use the brush to paint in the texture in the selected areas. So now the dark outline isn't part of the reference layer. So to make my selection for that portion, I'm going to use two fingers to press and hold on the layer to select the layer contents. Make sure when the selection toolbar pops up on the bottom that you don't have color fill on. It won't work. It'll fill everything with a solid color on your new layer if you do that. So just make sure that you don't have that turned on. Once I have my line work selection live, I'm gonna open my layers panel and make sure that I'm working on my last empty layer here. From here, I can switch to the brush tool and use this dark gray to paint in the texture. In the layers panel, I'm gonna hide the symmetry layers because we are done with those. We don't need them anymore. And now we can do the part where I think all of the magic really comes together. I wanna to shift everything off register. So to do this, in my layers panel, I am selecting the top layer, the outline, and then I'm gonna tap the transform arrow. And then once the bounding box appears, I'm tapping outside of that bounding box to incrementally nudge the layer in the direction that I'm tapping. Once it is just slightly out of alignment, I'm gonna move down to my next layer, tapping the transform arrow and nudging to shift this layer as well. And then lastly, I'm going to shift the pink layer. And that's it. I think that this just gives it the final oomph of realism, you know? To get rid of this center line, we're gonna tap the wrench and drawing guide and that hides the line. Now, if you wanna move everything all at once, you can group everything together, then you're able to position this around if you wanna to proceed to make a card or a print or anything like that. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something. Definitely let me know what you think. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you wanna see more, feel free to subscribe. You can find all of my resources, everything linked in the description below. Also be sure to tag me on Instagram if you make this. I'd love to see your results. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. your life is also controlled by tiny furry creatures, you will understand.